welcome once again to Kingdom Praise Ministries. We thank God for you coming to be with us again. We thank God for his blessings on our lives. We're excited today because today, number one, that we're alive, we're excited. We're saved, we're excited. We're also excited because this is our first virtual communion, so it's going to be, it's going to be different for all of us. And I, and I pray that you have uh, prepared yourself, those who are with us. Uh, if you don't have a communion packet like we have here, you can get some juice and crackers and join in with us. We'll bless the elements and we'll go forth from there. So you can go get that now real quick before the service moves on. We'll get yourself ready for communion and follow the morning, this morning's message. So I thank God for you. Those who join with us, we are, our um, followers are increasing and we're getting good response from those who are being ministered to through this ministry. Our whole purpose is not for formal fashion. My passion, those who work with me, our passion is to reach people for Christ. The souls might be saved, the saints might be encouraged. We want to glorify Christ with everything we have, with our voices, our talents, our prayers, whatever God's given to us, we want to exercise that for His glory. That's our passion. So we pray today that you would stay with us for the entire hour. We pray that God will be that God will use this message, this message, the singing, the prayers, and the communion, to bring you a little closer into his presence. At this point, at this time, I'm going to ask my wife to come and give us our morning prayer. Good morning. Let's hear the bow. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day, Lord, one that we've never seen before, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your sunshine, for your grace, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for being our Lord and Savior, Father. And, Lord, we just thank you, Father God. Father God, we ask you, Lord, that you that you cleanse us of our sins, Father God. Those that we confess, Father God, those that we don't know about, Lord, we pray that you reveal them to us, Lord, so we can confess those sins. That you say you are faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, because you have been a mighty good God, Father. Yes, you have been a faithful yes, God to us, Lord. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, Father, for all that you're doing and will do, Lord. We thank you, Father, for our salvation, for our deliverance, Lord. But Father God, we just thank you for being our all in all. Yes. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, because I just can't praise you enough because... You're worthy of all praise, all honor, and yes, all glory. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, you created the heavens and the earth. And, Lord, you've just been taking time over 50-something years creating me, Lord, to make me more in the image of you. And I just thank you, Lord. Father God, we just yes, ask Lord. you, Father, that you would touch the man of this hour, Lord, that he will bring forth the word with power and anointed, Lord, that he won't say anything outside of you, Lord, but you will speak through him to us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you... Touch Vashi voice, Lord, and that she'll bring forth the songs and the hymns of you, Lord. Father God, continue to work on us, Lord. Continue to work in us, Lord. And let all those who see us see you, Lord. Help us to be a vessel that you use to deliver your people, to save your people, to spread your word, Lord. Continue to work us, Lord, because we're not perfect, Lord. But please continue to work on us. And Lord, we just give you glory and honor for all things, Lord. And we just thank you in advance for all things. Because you're a mighty, mighty, mighty powerful God. Yeah, yeah. And we yes, thank Lord. you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 See, it's got a praise right there. Thank yes. you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank yes. God for saying Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Just to thank God for your thank salvation. You, Lord. Yes. yes. Just to thank, thank God for the great salvation you Jesus. Provide. We're going to ask right now that my daughter will come back. She's going to come and run this election. Thank you, Lord. You provide the fire. Yes. I'll provide the sacrifice. Yes, Lord. You provide the spirit. Yes, same. And I will open up inside. Yes, yes Lord. Thank you, Lord. You provide the fire. Mm -hmm. I'll provide. 
I the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. surfers do i never surfed in my life only watched them you know what a surfer do a surfer um goes out and rides away you don't want to ride what god is doing amen yeah. he better than, you know what's better than being a surfer is being one of them people that has the on there what do you call it? jet ski because mm-hmm. the surfer has to wait for the wave mm-hmm. but the jet ski make his own waves mm-hmm. hallelujah amen, amen. i want to have god pulling me amen and i just <laughs> ride along amen. pulling me where he want me to go and guess what if you fall down he turned the boat around, come back and get you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Isn't it good news? Yes. Amen. So yes. let's serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm excited about Jesus. Yes. 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 Every time I think about him, I get excited. Amen. Amen. I get excited about because of all the things he has for us. So this morning, briefly, I want to call your attention to Philippians once again. Philippians, the third chapter, verse uh, 13. We did verse 12 last week, 11 and 12, I believe. This week we're going to look at verse 13. Philippians 3 and 13. And it reads thusly. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind 
and reaching forth to those things which are before. I'm going to jump up one. Verse 12. Actually, I'm going to preach from verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, that if I may apprehend that for which I'm also apprehended of Jesus Christ. That's the verse I want. 312. 312. 313 is for next week. All right? <laughs> Lord willing. That's the verse I want. Um, let's have a word of prayer. Father, you know us so thoroughly. You know us so well. You know us better than we know ourselves. Yes. As I come to this hour, oh God, recognizing that this is nothing but dirt. This is nothing but a clay pot. This is nothing but an earthen vessel. But I know that you still write in dirt. I know that you still use earthen vessels. And I ask, oh God, today that you will use me to bring a word to your people. Yes, Breathe afresh yes, upon my life, oh God. Yes, the things that we've talked about, the things you shared with me, help me to clearly articulate them to your people. And I ask in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just for a moment, the subject, Philippians once again, 3.12, divine divine um, dissatisfaction <laughs> <laughs> divine dissatisfaction all right divine dissatisfaction Paul uh, you know that ought to be that ought to be as a child of God let me talk to the saints for a minute that ought to be within each of us, a desire to get closer to God. There ought to be, yes. when, when, when the Lord saves you, He turns you. Mm -hmm. If you've been genuinely saved, then you've been genuinely turned. Mm -hmm. uh, look at Paul, for example. He, when God saved him, he was going in one direction to do something of destruction. But God saved him and took him in that same direction to do something different. So God turned his core. He might have turned his direction, but he turned the core of who Paul was. Paul went out to cause destruction to Christians, and God now uses him to construct Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when God saves you, he turns you from the core of who you are. And in that core of who we, we are, we have to recognize, not recognize so thoroughly, that the salvation that the Lord has given to us is complete. When Jesus said it's finished, he finished it. You can't add anything to it. So Christ's work on our behalf, Christ's work for us is complete. But the Holy Spirit's work in us is an ongoing process. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit's working on us in an ongoing process to bring us to a place of being more like Jesus Christ. So I ought to be a, Paul, here's Paul in this verse. We've seen Paul earlier, how Paul said he lost everything that he might win Christ. He said he wanted to be found in Christ, not having his own righteousness, but having the righteousness that, that is by faith. We found him now desiring to know God in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of of his suffering. We see Paul desiring more and more of God. But here's a man who would walk with God some 25, 30 years when he wrote this book. This is a man who was called by Jesus Christ himself, hand chosen by Jesus Christ himself to do a work for God. Here's a man who seemed to have it all together. God used him to write 13 New Testament books. Here's a man who seems to have it all together, but yet we hear him saying he's not arrived yet. He says, not as though I already attained. I have not arrived. And so many people would just get this in their minds. I know you're gifted. I know you're skilled. I know you can bring the house down in, the, in your sermons. I know you're effective. I know you pray and you see God's faith. But can we get somebody in the audience today to admit that I have not yet arrived? I have not yet arrived. I know you're good. I know you're skilled. I know God's using you. I know you've got a big ministry. But guess what? You still haven't arrived. Because Paul had all these things going for him, but yet he recognized he was not there yet. He said, I have not arrived. And doesn't, isn't that the first step in change? Isn't that the first step to deliverance? To recognize there is a problem? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Isn't that the first step for every 12-step group that's out here? Alcoholics Anonymous, whatever drugs you want. They tell you, you got to admit you have a problem. And many of us can't grow because we can't admit we're not what we ought to be. Mm-hmm. We'll say it superficially. Mm-hmm. We'll say, I know I'm not perfect. And we go on to live the same life we've been living. Mm-hmm. We say, I got a lot of, God's got a lot of work to do in me. And we'll go on to live the life we've been living. We'll finish this uh, session. We'll finish this service. Cut the... Uh, uh, Facebook off and go on and live like nothing ever happened. Mm-hmm. But what God is calling for is genuine transformation in our lives. Mm-hmm. Genuine transformation. He says, though, he says, not as though I had already attained. I'm not where I need to be. I'm not where I ought to be. I'm not where I should be. Paul, the apostle Paul, can say that. If he can say it once, I can say it a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. If he can say it once, he says, neither was I'm already, I'm not perfect. This word perfect has the idea of being complete, of being whole, fulfilling all that I've been called to be. It's like if you plant an apple tree. When an apple tree grows up, it's not perfect yet. But when it grows up and starts bearing good apples, then it's fulfilling all it was called to be. Paul realized that although I have grown, although I've come a long way, I'm still not all that I could be. Right. So we've got to recognize that in our lives that I'm not perfect. I'm, I, I'm not where I ought to be. we got to realize that God wants to do a real work in our lives. A real word. And he's going to work that word by his Holy Spirit. Paul says, I'm not where I ought to be. Um, I'm, I'm not perfect at what I do. I'm not perfect in who I am. But thank God, aren't you glad you got one inside of you that's perfecting you from day to day? Yes. yes. Amen. So Paul is saying, I recognize that I haven't got there yet. I recognize that I'm not perfect. But he says, but I'm not content with that. Some of us are content. If I could drive the devil of contentment out of us today by the power of God's spirit. Some of us are content. Paul says, I follow after that. The next phrase. He says, I'm not perfect. I haven't attained it, but I'm not content with that. Some people are just content at where you are. And guess what? Contentment is uh, brings about a, uh, a lazy spirit. Contentment brings about a, a satisfaction. I know I've got faults, but that's okay. God's going to bless me. God's going to keep me. Yeah. He will bless you. He will keep you. But have you ever realized that God may want to move those things out your life mm-hmm. so he can use you in a greater way? Mm-hmm. Have you ever realized that God just may have a greater work for you? Can you ever realize? And I'm, I pray this often. Lord, I, I, pray, I talk to God about this. I said, God, there's something in me that's hindering me from going to the next level. I want that thing out of my life. Yes. Yes. If there's something in me that's hindering me from seeing you clearly, I want that out of my life. That's the bent of a child of God. Paul is getting us into the heart of his passion of who he is. But you'll miss it if you read by it quickly. He said, I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. I have not arrived. I'm not where I ought to be. He says, but I follow after. Mm. I press. Yeah. I follow after. I'm pressing to be all that God has called me to be. I desire it to be more than what I am. And you got to have that thirst. I'm trying to explain it sometimes because when I, 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 I pick up the spirit of people who's being content of, of just not thirsting after God. But God was satisfied and thirsty. He said, knock and the door shall be open. He said, seeking you shall find. He said, asking you shall receive. And this tense says written in the Greek, it means a continuation. We've got to have a desire, a, a perpetual desire that we're constantly Walking with God and wanting to be all he wants us to be. Yeah. He says, I follow after that. Are you following after the Lord? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. A lot of people want a lot of followers. They can say, look, I got a thousand people following me. But I want to tell you right now, Jesus is looking for followers. Mm. So hit his button. Hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. He wants you and I to be a follower. You and I to be a follower of him. And where he takes us. It may be some difficult times, but guess what? It's worth following him. Yes. And when we follow him, he'll let he'll lead us into loving our enemies. Yes. Yes. When we follow him, he'll lead us and be patient with other people. Yes. When we follow him, he'll call us to call us to be generous to other folk. Yes. When he when we follow him, he'll teach us not to hate. Yes. He'll teach us not to be jealous of one another. Yes. He'll teach us not to backbite from each other. We follow him, we become like him. Yes. yes. How many want to be like him? Amen. I see your hands yes. going on right there. Yes. Yeah, I want to be like yes. yes. When I see Jesus, who is so holy and perfect, but yet sinners wanted to be in his presence. 
When I see Jesus who is so powerful, he can speak to situations. When I see Jesus, who's so powerful that he can walk on water. Yes. When I see Jesus, that's so powerful that he puts his power and he puts that power into his vessels. He puts his power into his servants. I remember Peter and John going to the gate called Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was reading it the other day. So powerful. And I think we missed the, we missed the miracle, the totality of that miracle. Because the, the beggar was sitting there, had been lame from birth, which means he had never walked before. Y'all hear me today? He had never ever walked before, lame from birth. But when Peter and John came to him to go into the temple, he looked to receive some money. And they said, silver and gold, we don't have. But such as we have, we give it to you. Don't you realize you can't give something you don't have? Don't you realize you can't be something? You cannot instill in someone else something you don't have? You got to have it to give it. Yes. Right. Yes, Lord. And guess what? These men had so much power. All they did was reach down and lift them up. You know that man stood up? You say, well, okay, that's a miracle. But guess what? He had never walked before. That's right. Mm. He's seen other people walk by him. He'd been carried. But guess what? He had never walked before. The Lord healed him so, so thoroughly, he didn't need physical therapy. Mm -hmm. I remember going to the hospital. My son and I yes, both yes, had to get physical yes. therapy to learn how to walk again on his leg because he lost power of his leg. It took a long time. It was a process of getting up out the bed and sliding over to the chair and getting in the wheelchair and going to physical therapy every day for over a month, learning how to walk again. Yeah. But this man got, y'all don't hear this miracle today. Jesus got the kind of power. He got one touch from the Lord. He was able to get up, not only get up, go up the steps into the temple. And guess what? He went in walking and leaping and praising God. Yes. Oh, can I get yes. a witness? When yes. the Lord touch you, yes, he Lord. touches you real good. Yes. He gives you thorough miracles. That partial yes, miracle. Lord. He yes, touched Lord. you and turned everything around. Yes. yes. Bypass, he didn't have to learn how to put one step in front of the other. This man came out dancing. Yes. Aren't you glad about that? That's the kind of God that we serve. Yes. So this is the kind of God that wants to enter into our lives. He is a miracle working God. You don't believe it? Look in the mirror. Because you and I would not be here about by the grace of God. That's what Paul said. Yeah. Paul said, uh, this grace, he said, I am what I am. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Yes. I am what I am by the grace of God. And he said, you know, Paul said, but I, but God didn't give me that grace in vain. Some of us got vain grace. Mm -hmm. We got grace in vain because we're not using what God gave us. Mm -hmm. We got vain grace because God has given us grace to change our lives, but yet we're remaining unchanged. God has given us grace to serve, grace to walk before him, but we got grace in vain because we're not using that grace. Paul said, I didn't receive grace in vain. He said, but I worked harder than all of them. Yes. But he said, yeah, now nah, I, but that grace was in me. Amen. God was looking for somebody who will cooperate in your walk with God. Yes. You got to cooperate yes. with God. The Spirit of God, not going to uh, beg you. you know, some, some of the songs we sing, uh, put your hands together, put your feet on the floor, let the Holy Ghost knock you from the pulpit. No, he's not going to knock you from the pulpit to the floor. What he wants to do is he wants to take control of you. Mm. Yeah. He wants you to yield yourself to him. Mm -hmm. He's a gentleman. Yes. And I'm, I want all he's got. Yes. I want if I got a witness somewhere. I want yes. everything he's got for me. Yes, I want to be wide open. If something in me that he wants to move, I want him to move it. Yes. Yes. Talk to God about your pride. Talk to God about your envy. Talk to God about your tongue. How many yes. cussing? How many cussing Christians we got out there? Ooh. I know I got some cussers out there somewhere. And every now and then you stub your toe. You might not be a cusser all the time, but every now and then that cuss word, you want to ask, ask God to take the cussing out your spirit. Yes. Ask God to clean your life up. You try to do it, you're going to say, oops, all day long, oops. You call it French. That ain't French, it's bad English. <laughs> you're not speaking French. You're speaking foul English. And God wants to clean up our mouths he cleans our mouths up by cleaning our hearts up. And guess what? There's nobody can reach the heart but him. Yes. Right. yes you can try all you want to try. Okay, I'm going to go in this office today. Nobody going to make me mad. I'm not going to let nobody take the Jesus from me. I got this Jesus. I'm not going to let nobody pull me away from Jesus. I got peace. If somebody comes and cross you wrong, look at you wrong, all that stuff just spews out. You say, oh, Lord, you cannot change yourself. But God can change you. Yes. God yes. can make you different. Yes. God can make you whole. God can do these things. Take the time out to talk to God about yourself. Yes. Paul had a clear assessment of who he was. That's something we miss in our day. He says, I'm not where I ought to be. 
I see the downfalls in my life. I see why I mess up in my life. I'm not where I ought to be. We got to take a real assessment. We're going to take communion in a little bit. And in the communion, verses tells us to let a man examine himself. We got to take time to take some self-examination, some real looking at ourselves. You're about to take the Lord's Supper. He says, don't take it uh, unworthily. Don't take it in an unworthy fashion. Because when you do it, you're guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What does that mean? That means that when you're doing a lifestyle that's against God and you come to his table, you stand on the crowd, you stand with that same crowd that stood at the cross and say, crucify him. Mm -hmm. You stand mm -hmm. in the same shoes of those who spit upon him. Mm -hmm. When you take his, his, the Lord's table in vain, you stand in that crowd. But we're taking the Lord's table this, this morning to say we stand with another crowd. Yeah. We stand on another crowd that says, praise him. Yeah. Yes. We stand with the other crowds that say, see King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, we Lord. stand with the crowd that say, thank you for what you did for me. Yes. That's yes, the crowd Lord. we stand in. So you take the Lord's table, examine yourself. That's what Paul did. He said, I'm not who I should be. I have not attained it yet, but I'm not satisfied. How many can say that? Yes. I'm not. Yes. I got a divine dissatisfaction. Oh, it's a godly thing. It's a godly thing. Not, I'm satisfied with Jesus. But I'm not satisfied with where I am in Jesus. Mm. I'm satisfied with his salvation. I know he died for me. I know he covers my sins. I know he forgives me. I'm satisfied with that. But I'm dissatisfied in that I want to be all he wants me to be. Yes. That's the divine dissatisfaction. Yes. Every child of God ought to have in your heart. There ought to be a divine dissatisfaction. That I want to be more. I want to grow. I want to know. I want to come to know him as a real Savior and Lord. Yes. Paul says... I'm not perfect, but I follow after. How many follow him? Yes. Chasing. Yes. Hallelujah. Pursuing, pressing into his presence. Asking God to fix you. Asking God to make you better. Paul says, I am not there, but I'm following. He says that if I may apprehend. We don't use the word apprehend much today. We, we think about a police apprehending a criminal. But apprehend means to grab hold of. It means to grasp, to seize. And Paul says, I want to apprehend Anybody want to grab them? Yes. You want to grab all to what God wants you to be? Yes. I want to grab. If you, anybody feel like you're under arrest, that's what happened. God, God arrested Paul. God arrested Paul when Paul was about to arrest Christians. God got a hold of his life and grabbed him. And what Paul is saying, you know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying, everything he grabbed me for, I want to grab. Oh, if I could just come by somebody right now, give God a praise right there, who's yes. got that in your spirit. Everything he saved me for, I want to be there. Yes. Everything he rescued me for, I want to be there. Everything he grabbed my life for, I want to be there. Everything he called me for, I want to be there. Everything he purposed for my life, I want to be there. He says, because God grabbed me out of my life of sin for a reason. Yes. I want to comprehend, I want to apprehend that for which he apprehended me. God arrested me. God said, you're under arrest. God said, surrender. And I've got this divine dissatisfaction because I'm not where I know I should be. And we ought to have that in our life. We ought to want God to move some stuff out of us. Yeah. I shared this on yesterday. I'm just about done. On yesterday about for men's uh, prayer, uh, prayer time, men's, men's prayer group. On yesterday, I shared this about how one day I was in the house looking at something I shouldn't be looking at. Years ago, looking at what I shouldn't look at. But I felt like I was home alone. And I'm grown. I can look at what I want to look at. Can I get an amen? Mm -hmm. My family got real quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of the kids came in. And I cut it off. Y'all know how it is when you're looking at something you're supposed to look at. You hit that computer and turn that thing, whatever you're doing. I think it was on TV, whatever it was. And I turned it off. And when I turned it off, the Holy Spirit started working. I cried for days. I literally cried for days. You know why? Because he told me I had more respect for my kids than I had for God. Mm -hmm. That's heavy, y'all. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to receive that right now. I cried for days because you know what? Because God was showing me I was not the man I thought I was. Mm -hmm. I was not the child of God I desired. I wanted to be here, but I had a real deep assessment. God said, you mean you respect? That lets me know you're not hooked on anything. Some men out here now listen to me. You're hooked on pornography. But if your wife walks in the room, you cut it off. That means you're not hooked on it. Because if you got respect enough for your wife, you ought to have more respect for God. Mm -hmm. You ought to have, have some respect for yourself. You ought to have self-respect. You ought to know that God sees everything. You mean I can do something in front of God and won't do it in front of people? So who am I serving? God rich. My heart was so ripped. I realized that I wasn't even serving God. I was serving myself. 
I wasn't even serving God. I wasn't even, didn't even feel like a child of God because I had told God I respect a man before I respect him. Mm. I had told God that's mm. some stuff I'll do in the dark. Knowing it's wrong. But I won't let somebody in church see me do it. Mm. I told God I cried for, literally cried for days because I realized I was so far away from what I ought to be. But aren't you glad that God is a forgiving God? Yes. I cried for days because yes. I had to reassess where I was. It hurt me so bad because I didn't want to be in that shape. But there's a whole lot of folk out there just like me. Just like I was. But I thank God he didn't leave me that way. I thank God he fixed me. I yes. thank God he showed me and I was able to refocus on who God was. Now I want to apprehend all God has for me. Let me tell you this. You got some help out here. Yes. You know, you can find examples. You can find people who walk with God who can encourage you. You can read the Bible. And you can find people who will be a spiritual encouragement in their examples. There are many examples in the Bible. You have Paul for an example. You even have Jesus for an example. But guess what? An example won't enable you. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to think about that right now because that's heavy. Yeah. An example of someone may inspire you, but it won't enable you. Mm -hmm. Can I make it real for you today? What if I love Michael Jordan? What if I love him so much that I go out and I buy his shoes? He got hats. He got jerseys. He got coats. He got scarves. I put all that on. And I look at, I get a tape of him playing his best games. And I look at that game. I'm inspired. But guess what? When I get out there to play ball, <laughs> I may be inspired, but guess what? I'm not enabled. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any star you look at, you can be inspired by people, but not enabled by people. You can be inspired by your pastor, your preacher, whoever, your teacher. You can be inspired by people, but guess what? It's inspiration is not enablement. But I got some good news for you. I got some good news. Mm -hmm. I got some good news because the one who is skillful, the one who knows everything, the one who has all power, guess what? He not, he not saying you got to be skillful. All he's saying is, let me come in, and I'll give you the skills. That's right. Amen. That's a big difference, isn't it? Amen. God not only sets the example, he also enables us to do. Yes. To do and to will of his good pleasure. Yes. Yes. The Holy Spirit comes in, he not only inspires us, he gives us power to do it. Aren't yes. you glad about it? Yes. You got power. Aren't you glad about it? Yes. You got power. Yes. You got power yes. inside of you. And all you got to do is recognize that. When you're in your weakest time, remember the Spirit is with you. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know the words to say. Remember the Spirit said He makes intercessions for you. Thank you we don't know what to say to God. Remember Jesus Christ is praying for you. Yeah. Yeah. At your weakest moment, He's there. At your strongest moment, He's there. You can always reflect on who God is. My yeah. first thing is when I see trouble coming, my first response is I say, oh, well, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to fix this? How, what's the, how am I going to get this together? How am I going to figure this out? And then the Holy Spirit come reminding me, just let me take care of it. Yes. And a yes. peace just comes over yes. me. Yes. He's got it. And every yes. time I rise up again, he'll say, remember, I got this. Yes, Lord. When I'm trying to figure out my way, he'll say, I got this. That's right. How many know that's what the Spirit speaks to you right now? You worry about stuff right now you can't change, you can't fix, you can't rearrange. You just sit there worrying over and over again. Well, if you got time to worry, you got time to pray. Yes. Glory yes. be to God. Yes. Take that same worry time. And turn it into a prayer time. Take your worry list and turn it into a prayer list. And watch God change your life. Yes, Lord. And when you pray, leave it in God's hands. Yes, yes. Paul said, I'm not there yet. But thanks be to God, I'm following after that. I'm chasing him and pursuing him. And I won't be satisfied until I see his face. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Can I get a witness somewhere? Yes, Somebody Lord. give God a praise. Yes, I will Lord. not be satisfied. Until yes, I Lord. see his face. I won't be satisfied with where I am until I see him. Because when I see him, the Bible says I'm going to be like him. Yes. But he's going to change me to be just like he is. Aren't you glad about it today? Yes. Aren't you glad about it today? Yes. And give God a holler. Give God a scream. Yes. Give God a shout out. Thank this you, is not it. Yes, this Lord. is not it. I'm pressing yes, on. Lord. I'm moving on to be all God wants me to do. I'm going to yes. let the Spirit of God take control of my life. Give God a praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. you, Hallelujah. Yes, I'm pressing. Yes. I'm going yes. forward. I see my imperfections, but I don't want to stay in my imperfections. Yes. I don't want to hide behind my imperfections and use them for an excuse for not going forward.
I don't want to use my weaknesses as an excuse. Because every weakness you have, God says I got power for it. Mm -hmm. Paul got to a place he rejoiced in his weaknesses. Yes. Yeah, he used, you know, you're afraid of what you're weak for. We tend to call back because we know we're too weak to handle stuff. Paul said, I rejoice in my weaknesses because every weakness is an opportunity for me to see God's word. Yes. Every way I'm weak. And I believe that God allows some weak spots in our lives. Mm -hmm. Paul prayed about his several times, three times. And God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. What, is that, what does that mean? Paul, I'm not going to take this away from you. I could. I got the power to do it. But I'm going to leave it there and give you grace to overcome it. Yes. Grace yes. to be a better person. Yes. So Paul said, I glory in my weaknesses. This sounds crazy. Paul says, for when I'm weak, I'm strong. Yes. Can you say that? Oh, let the oh, weak say yes. I'm strong. Yes. Let the yes. poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. Are you glad about that? I'm glad yes. about yes, it today. Lord. I don't have to be afraid of my weaknesses. I can have glory in them and say, God, without you, I couldn't do this. But with you, I have your strength and power. Give yes, God's Lord. name a praise. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In our it's a prayer of dedication, and then we'll move on to our works, our community service. Yes, Lord. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sideways, man. yeah, it's going crazy now. Is it still going? Yes, yeah. yeah. All right. You watch. Ooh, let me bring down the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, move it closer to over that side. Thank you, Lord, for a great service, for your presence, for being here with us. Uh, I can't thank you enough for just the thirst to try to be more like you. Yes, I want people to see how I'm living as an example of how they should be living, and they want to and allow them to see the Christ through my face. Yes. Let me be. Let me be uh, uh, your presence in this place. Let me be an actual visual vessel of yours, Lord. Lord, please encourage that thirst, that, that holy hunger, that hunger for me to get closer to you so others get closer to you through me. Allow me to be your hands on this earth, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch everybody that hears the sound of my voice right now, that they will have a thirst and a hunger for you just to get closer to your kingdom, Lord. Allow them to be your hands on this earth. Allow them to like actually be like as they touch people around them. Allow the people that they touch see you. Allow this to be a spreading of your grace, your glory. Your glory can touch everybody. There's no situation that is not touchable by you. you can, you're the only one that can touch the heart. Save people from themselves, Lord. We have so many addictions that we won't even bring to the forefront. And by us just ignoring them or keeping it in our dark corners, it's just going to get stronger and stronger. But you can bring, you can shine the light on those dark corners, on those dark places, and bring out the truth. Because you are the truth, Lord. And I want to be, I want to be a vessel that brings more people to the truth, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch every person that hears the sound of my voice. Yes, God. Spread your presence through us, Lord. Yes, God. Not only your hand, like we want to seek your face. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. We 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 don't want to live through this whole life acting as part time Christians. Yes, yes, Lord. We want to be full time praisers. Yes. yes Lord. Allow us to well, every step we take be shown as a a miracle. I know every step I take at this very moment. The simple fact that I can use my hands is a miracle. Yes, the, yes, the point that I was able to walk up here is a miracle. Yes. yes. Lord. I, I can't thank you enough for all you've done, thank you, Lord. but I want to thank you even more for what you are going to do. Yes, because yes, yes. I know you're not done. Yes, you're yes. you're going to live forever. Yes, everything of this earth will diminish, but you are eternal, yes. and I yes, want to be Lord. eternal with you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. Thank you. I thank can't you, say Lord. thank you enough. Mm -hmm. 
I wish I I had the vocabulary yes. to really expand That's on what I really want to say to mm-hmm. you, Lord. But you know my heart. Yes. You know, like every dark corner, everything I keep hidden. I'm not going. I'm I'm just like every other person out there. I I, I was I I haven't been born a saint. Uh, I have dark sides too, but I know that you're bringing that dark out. You're taking it away. Yes, Lord. I, 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 I'm better than I used to be, but I know yes. that I have so much more to do. Yes. So yes. much further to go. Yes. And I thank you for that that hunger. Yes. Lord. For your for your grace, for your mercy. Yes. Uh, there, there's nothing on this earth that is worth not seeing you one day, Lord. Yes. yes. You've mm. created the earth, so there's nothing on this earth that mm. man can create that yes. can compare. even compare yes. to your glory, your yes. grace, like your touch, like just like the sight it. of your face one day, Lord. Yes. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this ministry together. Thank you for the struggles we had to go through. Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because I've learned so much more in my darkest times mm. than I learned in the brightest days. Mm. Yes. Lord, That's a word right just there. just thank you, Lord. I can't say it enough. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Please continue to bless this family, bless 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 this ministry. Make it your hands on this earth, Lord. Please, Lord, yes, help Lord. us, God. We we are part of the body of God. Yes. Just make us a, a usable tool, Lord. Yes, please, God. Lord. Make us a part of. What you want to see on this earth, Lord. Yes, God. Please. Allow us to draw more people unto you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes. Please bless us. We're going to do our first uh, social media communion. It's the first time we're doing this ever. First time I even heard of anybody doing it before. Mm-hmm. But I know you will bless it because you're in all things. You're in us. Yes. We are your hands on this earth, Lord. Amen. Amen. Sorry for our technical difficulty. <laughs> but we live, so anything can happen. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, how do we, uh, I guess the Lord has really shook the house. <laughs> so uh, just for a few moments, I'm going to read the rest of the scripture to you as we enter into our communion, uh, part of our, our communion service this morning. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 11, starting in verse 23. But I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as, after, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, when you come together to eat and tarry one for another, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. So as we come this morning, we want to reflect on our communion experience today. Because we're coming to remember, as I read before you, we're coming to remember what the Lord has done. Just think, and we're going to do this quickly and reverently as possible. Just think if you were on the street and a car was coming and you didn't see it, but some stranger jumped out and took the hit for you. When you came up and they passed away as a result, when you come up to realize what happened, how would that change your life? Mm-hmm. It would change your life because you would be in awe that someone cared that much that didn't really know you, who had jumped out and, and taken a hit for you. You would probably make some kind of memorial. You would be grateful forever for 
your life. You would uh, even want to know, well, I can't do for him, but what can I do? You want to know what can I do to show my gratitude? Can I tell you that someone who knows you better than you know yourself stood in harm's way? Stood in harm's way and took all the punishment that you and I deserve. But, and he died doing it. But the good news is he didn't stay dead. Yes. Yes. He died doing it so we could be saved and he rose again so we can walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. yes. And all he says to us that he wants us to do is to come together as often as we do this, do this in remembrance of him. Absolutely. We in this new covenant with the Lord. Especially the family covenant are speaking to come. We in this new covenant with the Lord. And a covenant, you hear me say this, you know, I always take every moment to teach. <laughs> a covenant, the body of the Lord broke for you. A covenant is different than a contract. Because in a contract, it's the protection of those involved. Your stuff, your house, your car, you sign contracts all the time. What we're saying is that um, when the contract is saying as long as you keep your part, you can keep that car. As long as you make payments. <laughs> so a contract is for the benefit of the, each party. But a covenant is for the benefit of a relationship. The only covenant I know today that we're keeping it, as far as civilization right now is marriage. And that's trying to be, that's kind of twisted around at some points and being redefined. But when my, act, my wife asks me, do I love her? I don't go get our marriage certificate and say, <laughs> see, this is my proof that I love you. No. We know we love each other because of things we do, because of the way we take care of each other, look out for each other. We show the love. So if you have been born again, you're not under contract. You're under covenant with God. Yes. And it's not something this happened 2,000 years ago. The love we have for him is a love that should be lasting and true in our lives right now. Mm -hmm. Because not only did he die, he lives. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege of being able to come to your table. It's not our table. This is your table. And every person under the sound of my voice, whether they just only had crackers and grape juice, whatever they had available to join us, we now ask you to take these simple elements and that you will attach to them spiritual value. That we know that the wafer that we shall take of represents your body that was broken for us. And we know that the wine that we shall drink of represents your blood that was shed for us on Calvary. So we thank you right now, O oh God, for the privilege of being able to come to your table. Now bless these elements, O oh God, and bless each one as we have a renewed uh, covenant, a renewed celebration of what you've done for us on Calvary. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us eat together. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is broken for you. Join us today, family, my family, and your family together. Let us eat together. How many of the blood still works? Yes. yes. That blood has not lost its power from 2,000 years ago. It's still cleansing. So we thank God. Let us drink together the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for our sins. Thank God. We thank God today. We pray that as our renewing, our, it's like a renewal of our, we pray today that you go out walking in the news of life. Recognizing in a real way that we're not celebrating someone who just died 2,000 years ago. We're celebrating the Lord who lives today. Yes. He lives. He lives. Yes. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along the narrow way. Aren't you glad about it today? Amen. Yes. We are witness to this. So let us depart from here now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. May God's grace and peace rest upon your houses, rest upon your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.